Isabel Oakshot has undoubtedly made waves again, stoking the fires of Westminster rumour mills by hinting at supposed secrets lurking in the shadows of Keir Starmer's personal life. Her recent comments on Talk TV, where she holds a prominent position as international editor, suggest that the Prime Minister has a secret, although she claims it is unrelated to his sexuality. The statement is a prime example of Oakshot's characteristic innuendo, leaving much to the imagination but little substance to verify. Oakshot's journalistic career has been marked by a curious blend of sensationalism and controversy and indiscretion. Early on, she had all the markings of a serious political journalist cutting her teeth on the regional press circuit before ascending to the lofty heights of the Sunday Times and then having some sort of jaunt with Richard Tice and uh, editing Matt Hancock's diaries. Oh, oh, let's edit my diaries. Let's get into the stationery cover to make it move. But the turning point came with her infinite, her infamous expose of Vicky Price and Chris Hune. In that affair, Oakshot not only burned her source, but also cast herself as a victim of betrayal. This episode... Uh, seemed to set the tone for what has become her hallmark, stories that border on the theatrical, sometimes seemingly abandoning journalistic rigour in favour of the dramatic, from the notorious pig gate in Call Me Dave to her questionable loyalty in the pandemic diaries with Matt Hancock. Oakshot has consistently walked a fine line between journalist and participant, between uh, reputable diarist, if you want, and uh, scurrilous gossip. Her work with Brexit financier Aaron Banks on the bad boys of Brexit, for instance, raised eyebrows when it was revealed she had downplayed or ignored potential Russian connections. Oakshot's pattern is one of selectively releasing explosive details, often positioning herself as the lone crusader against hidden elites. However, as her speculations about Starmer demonstrate her tactics frequently seem to serve less the public interest and more her own particular brand of political revenge or political um, invective. I don't, I, I don't quite know how she positions herself except in a, um, in, in a strange way in front of autocue. Her associations with Reform UK and figures like Nigel Farage and Richard Tice reveal a transformation into a partisan voice rather than an impartial observer. Oakshot seems to have evolved into a kind of political activist performing um, for, like, a, like, like, like a seal balancing a ball um, in the Leeds um, Variety Theatre, uh, promoting causes... She supports through her reporting, and some might argue that this diminishes her credibility as a journalist, aligning her closer to PR than the press. And in doing so, she sacrifices the neutrality that is historically defined journalistic integrity so that you can write this one day and that another. She doesn't. She just writes this, 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 this and this. And then she sits sort of rather blandly in front of a, uh, an auto cue and reads it without any form of expression. As if her words somehow have greater resonance than their delivery. Ultimately, Oakshot's forays into the secretive realm of politicians' private lives and her provocative reporting reflect a broader trend in media where infotainment and self-promotion overshadow truth and accountability. For self-promotion... I think basically onanism with words. As she continues to pursue stories that shock more than they inform, one might wonder if Isabel Oakshot has crossed a line from newsmaker to news fabricator, and the self-interest that drives her career may indeed ensure her a spot in the limelight, but it also leaves lingering questions about the future of journalism in the UK and the future of Oakshot within that concept. <laughs>